you received a PPP loan or two, and one was forgiven and one was not. And now you're starting to get collection letters from a collection agency that's been retained by the U.S. Treasury. That would either be TSI or Pioneer. Those are two collection agencies authorized by the Treasury to collect on the SBA debt. Here's what would have happened to get to the point where you are right now. If you applied for forgiveness, it would have been denied. Now, if you didn't get a notice from your bank, it's, it's very likely I, the SBA did uh, provide a final loan review decision letter denying forgiveness, and the bank may not have communicated that, or maybe it did, and you just didn't pay attention because it would have been sent by email, typically not by U.S. mail. So then the loan would have been forgiven for, I'm sorry, denied for forgiveness. You didn't respond. The bank would have then asked for payments to start on that loan, and you didn't respond. And then the bank it would have put it in default alone and it would have submitted the request to SBA for payout because the SBA guarantees those loans. SBA would have paid your bank and then over time transfer the, the loan to the U.S. Treasury for collection proceedings, which could be pretty aggressive. This could be including taking tax refunds. It could include liens and seizures of assets. So it's something you want to pay attention to and something you want to address immediately. First thing, call the collection agent, the representative who's been assigned to your case and indicate to them you want to resolve the issue. You want to try to apply for forgiveness. You're going to have to submit what they call a dispute letter showing that you, you can substantiate the forgiveness, right? It's going to have to include documents and an explanation. Now, there's two different calculations for forgiveness. The first is when before you got your funds, you would have applied for the PPP loan. You would have submitted your payroll records and the payroll would have justified the loan amount. So look back. If you got a $300,000 loan, but based on the calculations, including your payroll, you can only show $100,000 of loan qualification. Well, the maximum you're potentially going to get for forgiveness is $100,000, not the $300,000. The second part, and people typically uh, confuse these two analyses, the second part is how you spent the funds. Most people think, well, I got the loan, I spent the funds 100% on payroll, I should be entitled to forgiveness. That's not true. It has to be first on payroll, make sure you qualify for the loan before you got it for that amount, and then how you spent the money. How you spent the money at least 60% or more of the funds would have been used on payroll. And no more than 40% would have been used on legitimate business expenses. So that's the second part of the analysis. Uh, right now, what you have to do is communicate to the collection agent and say, look, I'm looking to resolve this. Uh, I would definitely consider hiring an experienced tax attorney. Someone's qualified in this area because if you simply just submit a blanket request, we're entitled to forgiveness, no explanation, and you don't understand all the issues about why it was denied, they're just going to submit a denial letter back again that says you don't qualify, start paying up. And then the collection is, is going to get pretty aggressive and they're not going to give you a lot of time to resolve this. And then it's going to, you know, there's going to get more aggressive collection uh, action, levies, seizures, things like that. So definitely hire an experienced tax attorney, go back and have them go back and find out exactly, literally all the reasons why the loan was denied. There could be more than one. It could have been not enough payroll. It could have been the fact that maybe if it was a PPP2 loan, you would have also had to show a 25% reduction in income between 2019 and 2020, either for the whole year or by quarters. So you're going to have to get a quarterly uh, breakdown, which then requires someone to sign off and say, this is a true and correct copy of my P&L and to substantiate it. Um, there's a lot of things that have to happen, but make sure you get somebody qualified. Make sure you address the issue right away. Submit the dispute letter, and hopefully you can get the forgiveness. And if you have any questions, feel free to call us. I'm John Milikowski, founder of Milikowski Tax Law.